Hey everyone, I hope you're having a good day. Today I want to talk about wood in architecture. So wood as an alternative to steel or concrete. Um, we're gonna look at it from a sustainability standpoint of course, but also structurally from fire safety perspective, aesthetically. Like we're gonna look at some sample projects. So I'm excited. Let's do it. So to some people, it might seem contradictory in the first moment to say that wood is a sustainable material because we need to cut trees to get, get wood. But, and don't we need the, as many trees as we can get? Don't we need to sit, protect our forests to combat climate change? Well, if we look at wood as a structural material, it's actually the only available material to us that is renewable. In, in Germany, we have this word called uh, nachwachsender Rohstoff, which is a bit more nuanced than uh, renewable because it literally means regrowable resource. So from wood, like trees, you can grow more of them, whereas in comparison, like steel or concrete, they're made of finite resources. So there is an and not an endless amount, there's a finite, there's a limited amount um, of that resource available on this planet. Whereas in wood, if you have a sustainably managed plantation or, or a sustainably managed forest, where you don't cut more than you can grow over time, then you actually have a really, um, yeah, a real renewable resource. But it actually goes further than that, um, because if we look at what wood is, what wood is made of, and if you take yourself back to your uh, primary school self, uh, then uh, you know about photosynthesis, right? So what happens in photosynthesis is this beautiful chemical reaction here, if you remember it. So you have the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water reacting with the and with the help of the energy from the sun into sugar and oxygen and um, as we can see like the the carbon coming from the carbon dioxide it doesn't leave the plant anymore it only it's only the oxygen that goes out at the end of this process and this is how like plants and trees and uh, all of these organisms that perform photosynthesis, they store the carbon over their lifetime in their own organism, right? This is uh, why we say that trees and forests, they clean the air because they take the, the carbon dioxide from the air and at the end result of the photosynthesis product, only the oxygen enters. And so over the lifetime, especially with trees, because they live over multiple decades, there's a lot of carbon that's being stored in the structure of the tree. So, but what happens at the end of the life of the trees? Because also trees die like after some like, after 50, 80, 100 years, right? They reach the end of their lifetime and they die. And at that moment, when they start to rot in the forest, all that carbon that was being stored over the, the, its lifetime is being released back into the air. So when the organisms come and break down the wood, the, the carbon that's being stored in the, in the wood in the tree is being uh, released back into the atmosphere. And this is the normal cycle, how, um, how it's the normal, normal carbon cycle of how it um, has been going for millions of years. But um, if we're saying now we're trying to take as much carbon out of the atmosphere because we have a surplus that's affecting our climate, then if we 
hinder the tree from rotting. We actually cut it before it dies. We take the wood and we use it in a building. We're extending the lifetime of that, of that piece of wood by maybe a hundred years or even more. I mean, there's wood buildings who are very, very old and that carbon that was stored like all this time ago when the, that particular tree was growing, that has not been released back into the air. And that is what you call a carbon sink. So basically like a carbon storage. So if you're using um, wood in construction, wood in architecture, you're not only avoiding carbon because you're not the, um, producing carbon in the production of the material, but you're actually actively removing carbon from the atmosphere. And that is what's so great about it. But that is, of course, only the sustainability side of things. If we're talking about wood as a structural material, then there's other very important factors we have to look at as well, like fire safety, structural integrity. Like with concrete and steel, you have very high performing building materials. So can wood be a real competitor to that? And I mean, we've all seen like barns or like little mountain houses being made from wood, but can you actually produce like modern architecture, like multi, multi-story houses from wood? And here I would like to introduce a example um, that I was a, a beautiful building that I was able to visit. Um, it's a wooden high rise. So a multi-story building in the town of Schleftio in the north of Sweden. So in this high rise, all the structural elements are made from wood. So when you're inside, you can see these large wood columns and beams. And, um, and I have to say that not only did I find it very beautiful, but you get an instant feeling of, um, you, you feel very comfortable inside of it. And this is another advantage of wood is that it's actually um, the, the climate it creates inside the rooms is very healthy uh, from like, um, wood is a very good insulator and it's also regulating air humidity nicely. So yes, it is possible to build even high rises from wood, which is, in my opinion, very exciting um, and I wish I would have learned more about it in university. So I think it's very important that as structural engineers we also learn now more about how to use uh, wood as a structural material and not just uh, steel and concrete that at least in my education we were really focused on. Um, but of course immediately when you see all this exposed wood you think, especially as a German, uh, you think about fire protect protection. We have uh, a lot of laws around fire protection in, in our country. And um, so wood, wood burns, right? I mean, wood is a, is, you can ignite it and you can create a fire from wood. So this, there is no uh, denying of that. So this is something that has to be managed if you want to use wood as a structural material, if you want to build a wooden house. But um, if you've ever built a bonfire from like big logs of wood, you also know how hard it is to, you can't just like put a match to it and then you, your <laughs> bonfire will be uh, nice and bright. Like it, it's, uh, it takes a long time to, to ignite it. And especially if it's like big logs of wood, they don't burn all the way through because wood, when it's uh, being burned, turns into coal. And if you have, if we're thinking about a wooden beam, um, then this um, coal, uh, la this layer of coal, actually at some point when it's thick enough, stops the wood from burning further. So if we're thinking about a, a fire going on for a while, um, the, the wood will eventually stop burning and then you are left with a core that is still 
um, still in still intact. And this uh, is something that's actually different to if, if we're looking at steel beams. So steel in a fire is actually uh, really dangerous because it will lose its structural integrity. It, at some point it will start melting and um, then it becomes really dangerous. Whereas if you take that into account when you're designing the, the building and when you're designing the, the beams or the columns, that there you have to take into account this uh, layer of coal that will develop and you size up your columns that even if that um, if it burns down to to its minimum that that core still is structurally strong enough to uh, keep up the structure of the building you actually will, can guarantee that the house is not going to collapse and um, that's actually a very uh, that's a very nice aspect of wood compared to uh, a steel structure uh, but of course, you have a lot of smoke developing, um, and so that is when while that wood burns, and so that's something you have to take into account, and uh, in especially with like your ventilation systems, uh, with your smoke exhaust uh, systems, and. Um, but there is also ways of treating the wood uh, with chemicals, with protectants, that it will take longer to ignite or that it um, doesn't start burning. So there are uh, aspects that you definitely have to regard when building with wood. But it is possible, even in, in Germany with all our fire safety uh, regulation, there is buildings built from wood, even entire city blocks. Like for example, in Munich, the Prinz Eugen Park that um, I visited on a uh, university excursion the other week. And it was a really interesting project. So it's a residential project uh, led by the city. And um, like in most European cities, there is also in Munich a shortage in housing. And so the, the city has a high pressure to provide more, more housing for its residents. And um, in this case, they, they said, we, we want to do it. We want to do it in a sustainable way. We want to um, do it in, in wood. And they've, they built out this entire area uh, with these really beautiful buildings. Uh, actually, me and my, my student colleagues, we said we would definitely move there. It was like a really uh, had a good good vibe to it because um, not only was it sustainable in the building materials, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't care about that, but also they uh, took a lot of care to building a community there. There was uh, shared areas and also to have a good um, social mix of, of people. So uh, the city actually did not sell any of the houses and is never going to. It's only for, for rent and uh, the rent is also regulated and there is a, a always um, there are certain mechanisms that ensure that there is a good mix of income classes, social classes and um, to yeah to just create a, a colorful uh, mix is how they have described it to us and it really seemed to be working it was a really uh, nice atmosphere there so in summary what i hope you can take from this video is that wood is a valid construction material it is actually the most eco-friendly material available to us uh, because it's recyclable which for example concrete isn't it is um, renewable, regrowable, as we say in, in German. Um, and it is a, a carbon, it has a carbon storage capacity. So it's a carbon sink. So if, of course, not building anything would be the most sustainable option, right? It's always like not consuming anything, not 
doing and think is the most sustainable solution, but that is not an option available. Or be, we need houses, we need uh, shelter, right? And uh, we have still a growing population on this planet, so we need to provide houses for these people. And so if we're saying we, we need to build, then wood is building and wood is the most sustainable option available. I'm of course also speaking here from a German Central European perspective where you have the availability of wood and where it's possible to uh, have sustainably managed forests. Um, but that's not the case everywhere on this planet, right? In some regions, it would be very resource intensive to to grow uh, wood and to grow wood uh, tree plantations. And in that case, um, you have to, to look at other resources available, like for example, uh, clay is at least, a, it's also a finite resource, but at least it's a recyclable material. So at the end of the life cycle of the building, you can um, re recycle it, you can use it again. Like every time you, you mix it with water, you can shape it into a new form. And there is also modern buildings built out of uh, clay, which is very interesting. So, yeah, at the end, it comes down to this. Concrete and steel are finite resources. They're very, very carbon intensive. So producing one ton of steel produces 1.8 tons of CO2. That's crazy right because it's so energy intensive to produce it and for concrete for cement it's also one ton of uh, cement is uh, producing 0 0.5 tons of uh, carbon in the process so also an enormous amount and uh, so if we want to have an impact on climate change we need to stop using these uh, materials as much as possible to to avoid as much carbon as possible. So wood is is the best um, alternative out there, and um, I'd be excited to learn more about how to build with it. So if you're also interested in that, let me know, and maybe we can explore that to together and look at some like building details and all of that stuff. So I hope you found this interesting. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.